And we're back with some more X4 and lots of little green blobs moving around on the screen. But today, today's going to be about a couple of things, but namely getting your uh, our Earl King up and running. Actually, wait, no, we have a new name for the Earl King. A bad dragon. Yes, yes, the bad dragon. We're going to like upgrade that by finding all of the necessary components to turn it into a badass ship by getting a whole bunch of uh, mods for it. However, first, there's something we want to do. We want to make money. We want to make... Lots and lots of money, and we're going to do it really, really quickly, because we've managed to wall off the parts of the map that should be dangerous from xenon infestations and stuff like that. Uh, as well as that, we now have enough blueprints that people are buying ships off us. Uh, not right anyone right now, but basically we have all of the Taladi blueprints, including the Ministry of Finance ones, and they're buying ships from us on the regular. I also bought up a bunch of the Paranid ones in the background. Uh, yeah, so the whatever these guys are called, the God Realm of the Paranid and the Holy Order of the Pontifex. I've allowed both of those to start buying ships out of our shipyards, which is hilarious when the, the Holy Order of the Pontifex does it because the ships get produced here and then, oh, wait, no, that, that's the one, nope. Then they immediately get attacked by the Taladi, which is why there's all of these uh, containers over here containing stuff. It's because they're getting stomped on by the locals. Uh, the, the Ministry of Finance don't like them, so they keep killing them all as they spawn and then they buy more which get killed again, and we just keep making money from it, which is wonderful. Now, I am kind of paranoid that these guys over here, because we're supplying them with chips, are going to swarm and kill these guys over here that we're also supplying with chips, namely because these guys' ships arrive there alive, these guys' ships keep getting killed before they get out of the dockyards. But whatever. We have a plan on how to make a lot of money very quickly for very little effort. What we're going to do is we're going to go all the way over here. We're in split territory. Uh, do you, why are you got that yellow thing going on? Oh, we've been promoted to a P... Mm. Zyarth Patriarch would like to honor us by... Yeah, 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 later, later, much later. So we're over here at the split equipment dock in the middle of the ass of nowhere. And the reason for that is we're about to go... Well, we're going to skip forward time. You see, if you're sitting in a cockpit, even if you're docked at a ship, you can go into SATA mode. Well, actually, no, that's not quite really true. You can't go into SATA mode unless you first go into map view. So if you go to map view and hit shift and four, it goes into SATA mode and time speeds up. I think it's by four, by eight, something like that. So what we're going to do is let our wharves and stuff build up while we're gone. Uh, two things are currently building. Greasy Joes, we have queued up an enormous amount of production. Just, oh my God, uh, that's, that's going to double our food capacity. So that's been queued up. Also, the wharf of, no, not the wharf of money printing. Everything, everywhere, all at once. We have queued up a lot. Now, it doesn't look like it because the factory's so big to begin with, but there's like a whole stack of stuff along here you can't even see. Uh, there's stacks of stuff over here. There's more stacks of stuff over there. Biomes in there. Actually, I'll just scroll this stuff on the right. This stuff is on the right is what we have queued up. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We're almost there. And... E done. Advanced electronics. So, that is all the stuff we have queued up. And this is so that our factory can produce enough to supply our shipyards. Because it turns out, trying to feed ships to both of these factions while they're getting all the ship blown up, we're not able to keep them stocked up. We just can't do it. However, if we increase our capacity enormously, then maybe we can. For example, we're, we're almost out of hull parts. This part over here is producing them, but they're just getting, like, they're just, yep, they're getting ripped out of storage immediately. So, the plan. Shift, four, time dilation takes effect. Now, if you excuse me, I'm going to cut this next bit, but I'm just going to leave this run overnight and go to sleep. Yeah, I'll be back in the morning in about uh, seven hours or so, and we'll see how our team is done. Okay, bye-bye now. Several hours later, things are looking pretty good. Oh, and uh, we've renamed the Earl King to now Don't Make Me Come Over There. And our ships and everything have survived pretty well intact. I don't see any problems. And our money's gone up by about 6 billion. We went from half a billion to 6.4 billion. And a lot of the money was uh, made by the shipyards and stuff like that. Selling ships is a very profitable way of making money, it seems. However, not everything is sweetness and roses. When it came to uh, Greasy Joe's, it didn't build. Uh, there was some problem, something glitched out. It 
hung and I don't know what exactly caused it. I tried fiddling around with some of this stuff down here and it didn't fix until I reloaded the game. So it turns out I should have saved the game, loaded it, and then let it run overnight. Uh, learn from my mistakes. Oh, and when it comes to letting it run overnight in SATA mode, if you're trying to do that yourself, you're going to want to turn off a few things. Namely, the alerts. Where is it? Global orders. I turned off a bunch of these notify incidents because if they notify you, it kicks you out of SATA. I did this ages ago, so if you're trying to do something like this, uh, this is the settings I'm using to make sure it doesn't kick me out at any point. Oh, and statistics-wise, this is what it's looking like in terms of time spent in SATA mode. Is that like four days? I mean, it was seven hours at about eight times speed, so that might make sense? Hmm, whatever. It's done. We're through. Uh, there are a couple of other side effects as well. Though, oh, this place in here? Almost finished. Almost. We didn't actually finish all the construction projects. We've still got smart chip production along here, which is going to take a while. And we've got some advanced electronics. So this entire place didn't finish its construction orders. That's how much we'd queued up. Which is probably a good sign. Wait, what's that? Oh yeah, they're the advanced electronics that have to finish off. Good production though. Um, oh, and Greasy Joe's. During this time, it's actually acquired all the resources it needs to build itself. Which is 173,000 hull parts. To put that in perspective, we can't even produce that in an hour, and we're probably the largest hull producer, like, of everyone combined. We can do about, I think it's about a hundred and something thousand, I'm not sure, some of it's not currently functioning because we're not exporting them fast enough. There's, we've got an unfortunate bottleneck, we've got loads and loads of hull parts. The problem is, those hull parts can't get to where they need to go over here in the wharf of money printing. And the reason they can't do that is, I think, transport ships. So, we don't, I, I thought we had enough transport ships? But everything everywhere all at once has this many transport ships going for their trade ships. Still not doing it. So we're going to start maybe including some large ones. Uh, so for that reason, I've started installing a few extra large transport docks. This way we can chuck in a whole bunch of large transport ships and they can bring the resources back and forth. Actually, how's everything everywhere all at once doing for large docks? I think we've got three of them built onto this. Yeah, we've got three large transport docks there at the front. You can sort of see them. Yeah, one, two, and three. In fact, I think we're going to put on a couple more just to improve throughput. So six large docks should help out. And this takes us to this takes us to a good point right about now. We uh, we don't need any more money. Uh, let me try and explain that in hopefully a way that doesn't sound too stupid. You see. Right now, we want to build a bunch of large transport ships, and the best ones for us to probably to use would be the Taladi ones. So if we went with the large ones, which one is it now? I think it's the Pelican Sentinel. It's got about the best amount of cargo space. It's it's pretty chunky and, well, we don't really care about cost. We're producing this ourselves, including all of the components. So we can just stick, say, some Paranid travel all round engines on it, which we have the blueprints for, no problems. We can then throw on a bunch of all round thrusters. Shield wise, we'll probably go with Paranid or actually Taladi aren't bad, or Paranid. Both are really much of a muchness, to be honest. Actually, I think I prefer the slightly higher recharge rate. Anyway, we'll just say we'll go with Paranid shields for these. Uh, weapons wise, Flak, Paranid shields. Oh, an Argon Flak. Argon Flak with Paranid shields, and we're done. We could have went with the. Uh, other shields as well, it doesn't really matter. I'm just kind of, uh, I'm a bit of a pirated. I like the pirated stuff. Docking computer, all the usual junk. Captain, service crew, no marines required. And done. In fact, let's save this loadout. And finished. So, we've got a big trader. We shall add them to our shopping list. And we'll say, give us ten of them. And, oh, we're actually going to be short on shield components, advanced electronics, and turret components. But those can all be fixed. However, if we scroll down the bottom here, we'll see we are currently producing that, like, at one of the Pelican Sentinels, and we'll have nine more along in a while. At no point did we talk to the Tladi about this. At no point is their input required. Namely because, well, we've got all their blueprints. We have taken... Uh, let me uh, expand all this out. All of their countermeasures, consumables, drones, missiles, all the thrusters, their engines, their shield generators, their turrets... Everything. Weapons, ships, small, medium, large, extra large. We own all the blueprints, all of their modules, their processing modules. Now, I didn't bother getting the luxury docking area. We don't need it. You know what? Let's buy it anyway. The basic one, not, not worth it. It'll just clog up our menu system, to be honest. 
And the uh, small luxury docking area, I don't get it. It's the same size, but it just carries le uh, supports less stuff. We also didn't bother with our habitation modules, uh, some of the smaller storage containers. That's just going to cause more stuff we don't care about clogging up our menus. Uh, the extra large maintenance bays and large maintenance bays, they're just a cheaper way of getting stuff onto some of your ships. We literally own the fabrication bays. They do all the same things. They were just more expensive to obtain, so we don't want those either. And then when it comes to some of their production, I suppose we can get space weed, though we'll never use it, so no. Also, some of their production methods, like we don't want swamp plants, we don't want space weed. Uh, their scanning ray production, I think that's normal ones or whatever. We, we're using the Teladi version, so that's just going to confuse us. Also, hull part and engine production, that's the standard versions, not the Teladi version, so we don't care about those either. And advanced composite, same things. We don't want any of those. Good which means we have to you. all of their blueprints, and we can produce all of their stuff. And why would we ever buy anything from them ever again? The re like, we might try to buy ships from them, but if we tried to buy 10 ships, it would take them an eternity to get the parts together in one shipyard to actually produce those 10 ships. We can produce all of those ships ourselves, provide all of the resources, figure out what the bottlenecks are, expand our production to get rid of those bottlenecks to produce more ships. There is no reason to ever go back to the Teladi. By the same token, we then just... The only thing you need money for late game is to buy blueprints so that you can produce other people's ships and equipment. Once you have bought every single other race's blueprints for all of their ships and all of their buildings and all of that stuff, what do you need them for anymore? If you can produce all of their stuff, you don't need them for upgrades, you don't need them for their equipment, you can already produce their ships and weapons, you don't need them for anything. And I think with about six and a half billion, that might be just about enough to buy out everyone of all of their gear. Uh, excuse me, I'm just going to go around and... Uh, buy out the Paranid both sides of all of their gear before one of them dies and then once I've bought all of their gear we're going to go upgrade the what was the ship called again ah the speak softly and carry a big stick we want to upgrade that Earl King but just just give me one minute first in our stupidly largest purchase of all time uh, we're going to purchase 1.77 billion of blueprints namely from the Terrans here we're going to take all of their engines namely because they're terrible I want to demonstrate how terrible they are later oh no they have advantages but uh, never mind we're getting those all of their shield generators because they have some of the best shield generators going around we should probably be buying the mark threes but let's just be thorough here and buy all of them because we can uh, as well as that we're going to buy all of their turrets because they have unique turrets all of their weapons because they have unique weapons Oh my god, that one costs 87 million. Anyway, when it comes to their ships, we don't really care about their fighters, to be honest. Um, medium ships, though, Fox, the Yan, and the Katana, we'll, we'll pick those up. And for their large ships, the Osaka and the Sin, they're two fighting ships. They're, they're actually pretty decent. We don't care about their traders or anything like that. And the Asgard for their extra large ships, because that thing's a beast. Uh, we're also going to buy all their docking things, because I want to see what they're like. As well as that, they have their own specific fabrication base, so that's... 700 million right there, and uh, then we're going to buy all of their production modules, namely because we don't have any of them. But yes, let's see, one point... Good luck out there. Oh, oh good luck to you too. Um, so many licenses. We've also bought a police license and a trade subscription from them. Thank you. Thank you for that. Good that luck is, out um, there. That was incredibly expensive. I am just going around to all of these different locations to try and find them. And let's pop over to the Terran cult and see if they've got anything. I've already hit up the Ministry of Finance, the Teladi, Paranid boat factions, Entering the Split system. boat Secures. factions. Ooh, this is some expensive purchasing. But assuming we finished all of this, we can then sort of ignore all the other factions. We won't really care about whether or not they live or die because, well, we've Hello. got all the stuff we want from them. One other thing that I've noticed is that... The Teladi and the Vigor Syndicate, they hate each other. This is a Vigor Ice Frigate, and it's popped into our territory. This happens all the time, because this is right next door. This is where all these, uh, the Vic people hang out, the Vigor Syndicate. So they're sending ships in here, and the Teladi are just killing them. Which is kind of cutting down on the amount of ships they have, which is good, because otherwise their ships seem to get out of control. Okay, they are a little bit out of control. But the fact that they're sending ships in here does help deplete their production numbers a bit, and it does help kill off a few of the Teladi ships, which means they buy more ships from us, which makes us more money. Not that we really need it anymore. Uh, I think we've got everything we're going to need for a while. In fact, I think we're going to cut off all of the other people. We're going to stop selling stuff to them. Well, we don't need the money, so why would we? We're going to want that stuff so we can produce our own ships. So I think it's time we put a few trade restrictions on this. The sale of ships currently has no restrictions. We're going to make that no outsiders. We are now the only people who can use those trade places. Let's see if there is anything uh, currently in the works. 
Yeah, Holy Order of the Pontifex and the Zyrath Patriarchy are currently buying ships, and more by the Zyrath Patriarchy. Well, tough. This is your last hurrah. And over here, these guys, they're uh, not a single battleship in production. Oh, wait, no. A construction vessel for the F or F. Who are the F or F? I don't know who those people are, but uh, good luck to you. This is the last ship that's going to be produced out of that shipyard. All right, then. Once that is completed... Oh, actually, no. Let's go grab the Earl King and go on a little bit of a rampage. The first place we want to go is... Where is it? I think it's down here. Pious Mists? Yep, there is a Buccaneers Duke's Lost Property Office down here, and we want to go pay them a visit. Before we do anything with the Pink Plinker, we do have to upgrade it. So what we'd like to do here is, well, go down to the upgrades bay in this system and put a few of the more basic upgrades on it. We don't, well, okay, let me, let me go down to the dealership and I'll cover what we want to do, why we want to do it, and why we want to hold out on some of the higher end ones. We'll just pop over here to this workshop. Hey, do you want to, do you want to bugger off? Well, I'm using this. I, I don't care that you're there. All right. Uh, first up, we do actually have picked up some uh, advanced stuff or some of the higher end stuff. Like we've got a, the ability to make some of these higher end uh, advanced upgrades here. And we've even got, I think, enough to do an advanced weapon mod as well. But we're not going to use any of those just yet. What we're going to do is put on the basics because the basic ones can be acquired. All the stuff required to do a basic weapons mod can be got by just raiding some of the Xenon sectors or... Collecting from some of the Xenon corpses, basically. So we can do the Polisher one, which is the ship drag mod. You can do that for cheap. It's only 50, 50 grand, and all we're looking for here is about to get the minus 16, which is the best one available. Come on, give us about a yeah, minus... Oh, that's perfect. That's literally the highest one you can get. Um, Done. Right. And remember, we're just going with the super duper basic ones here. Uh, when it comes to the Earl King's main battery, uh, we'll come back to that one. Turrets, now... This one's actually super simple. Is it the stabber? I think it's the stabber, or maybe it's the slasher. Let me just check. Nope, nope, sorry. It is the slasher. Uh, the slasher comes with the potential for plus 100 to reload, plus 50% for weapon damage, and the weapon cooling does not matter. This means that this mod is the best thing for turrets forever. It doesn't matter if you've got access to exceptional or super exceptional quality or enhanced or exceptional quality mods. You're still better off putting these up mop upgrades on your turrets because there is literally nothing better. And you just keep re-rolling until you get about 100% reload. Or, well, 90% reload is what you're aiming for. Now, there we go. 98% reload, 38% damage. That's a big, big damage increase. Oh, damn it, I probably should have... You know what, I'll go back and uh, screenshot th what this was at the start so we can compare the two. This is going to drastically increase the uh, the weapon damage of some of our turrets. It's done. I even went back and re-rolled a few. I wanted to have 40% uh, weapon damage and 90% reload bonus for all of our large turrets, which we have achieved. Now, I know in the past video I was promising we were going to do range upgrades on these, but uh, I was told that I was being a Muppet, and I am very open to being told I am being a Muppet when I am being a Muppet. Uh, for example... When you upgrade the damage on this, well, when you apply this modification to the turret, just say we get a 40% damage bonus, which we have on at least all of these. That means you're doing 140% damage every hit. However, it's reloading 90% faster. So that's a 90% reload bonus on top of the 140% damage you're doing. It's just huge. The, the damage bonus is so huge that nothing you can get in any of the other things with, like, if we went with the range bonus, we'd only be getting a 30% damage bonus and no reload bonus at all. And that's if we got the best rolls we possibly could. This is just so huge, it's it's pointless. And considering the speed we've got with our chassis modification, we should be able to get in and do some serious damage. In fact, our next modification, I think, uh, before we do... Actually, you know what? We'll do this one now. Uh, Mistral is what we're going to use for our main cannon. This increases... Oh, in fact, let's just do it here. It increases weapon cooling by 50%. Oh, wow, I think we just rolled... Yeah, probably as high as you can possibly get. It's reduced our damage, but our weapon reloads, you know, twice as fast, and our weapon cools down 50% faster. That's going to be interesting. Uh, yeah, let's just leave that one there and go straight down to engine modifications. Now, where was it? Ah, Nudger. Yes, we'll stick this one on. Uh, now, this one's good and bad simultaneously. One, it gives you massive engine forward thrust which makes us really, really fast. On the downside, it reduces engine boost thrust and travel mode thrust. We, we don't really care. Um, our travel mode speed is like 14 kilometers per second. Our boost speed, yeah, 
it doesn't matter, right? We can now move at 617 meters per second in normal space. That's faster than most fighters. We're an extra large battleship. We can move faster than most of the fighters we're going to be up against. That's insane. And, oh, this is just going to be so much fun. All right, shield generators. These ones are pretty straightforward. Pick which one you want. Do you want better shield recharge or do you want better shield capacity? Now, we went with Turin shields because despite there being a, a specific shield for the Earl King, um, it's not as good as the Turin ones. Turins just have the best shields. They may be douchebags, but their shields are incredible. So, um, let's just go with shield recharge rate. Yeah, why not? Uh, max is at a 20%, so we'll just redo this until we get, say, 18% or higher on all of them. Done. Yeah, this, this could take me a lot of rolls. Done. Everything, everywhere, all upgraded. All finished. The whole thing sorted. So, how did it work out in the end? Well, our burst weapon damage went up, uh... Well, that's their main cannon, so it went up by only about a thousand points or so, but we were kind of expecting that. Our sustained weapon damage has went up by almost about 1,800 points, and our turret damage has went from 2,500 to 6,000, or 6,900, which is, which is a lot, which is a huge amount of damage. This thing can basically shred ships, um, and starbases. This is one of the reasons you want this ship. It's really fast for shredding stations. The, uh, the Terran have their own large super killer ship, but it's incredibly slow, and this thing moves at 617 meters per second. We started at 355, which means we got about 260 points of extra meters per second out of this thing. Our acceleration has gone up by a third. Our boost speed has gone up by about 100... Well, it's not great. But our travel speed's gone up by about another 3 kilometers per second. Strafe, all that stuff, pitch, yo. We're going to be more maneuverable, better at just about everything. This is... This is great. It's just like excellent. Okay then, well uh, with that done, let's go uh, make ourselves even better because there's some extra mods we can get Greetings. that would make the ship just a little bit extra. All we gotta do is go uh, kill some people and take the mods off their corpses. The reason we came all the way to Pious Mists is because there's uh, the, Books, the Duke's Lost Property Office. Now this is a little faction all to itself. I think there's some missions involving them, but uh, we don't really care about that. What we do care about is some of their ships are present in sector, sector B-U-C. Uh, if you put down a bunch of satellites everywhere, it's much easier to find them, and you can just go B-U-C, do a quick search, and you can find out locations where you can see a bunch of their stuff. So, for example, we can see all their ships here. We can see the Lost Property Office. There's actually some of their places that they own. They'll probably have ships in there as well, though we probably don't have visibility on it. And there's another location over here where we've also discovered stuff belonging to the Duke. Now, the great thing about the ships that the Duke has he invests. Uh, they're actually upgraded ships, as in they've got upgrades, usually exceptional upgrades. Not to their weapons and stuff, there used to be better upgrades for these going around, but uh, the devs noticed that people were killing all of these guys and taking all their upgrades. If we kill these, uh, we'll be able to get some nice upgrades out of their corpses. Uh, namely the chassis ones, the stock exceptional ones. So let's see if we can't put one right in their eye right there. Hey, you come back here. Damn it. They're going out of range. That's okay. We can move faster than them. Now, let's go pick a fight. You know what? That was taking too long. We're just going to mark them as hostile. I will defeat you. Yeah, well, sorry. And then the rest of them will all end up dead. And let's see. Turrets attack all enemies. Yeah, that's grand. Oh. And did any of them drop any cargo containers? Ooh, buddy, don't get that close. That is a bad idea. Oh, I love the sound of those guns. So anyway, we're just going to um, stop right here. We're going to let our turrets do the talking. And while that's going on, let's have a quick... Where are... Oh, sorry. I still had the filters on. Let's have a quick check here on some of the things that they've dropped. No, no. Exceptional ship nano weave. Yes, that is what we're looking for. What else you got for us? You got... No. Exceptional ship nano weave. They seem to be very fond of exceptional ship nano weaves. Exceptional ship nano weave. And another exceptional ship nano weave. And some basic weapons chamber. And yeah, that seems to be all so far. Uh, but is that. No, that's the police force. Right. In that case, we shall just go. Uh, we'll take all of that. Thank you very much. And we'll just grab all of that stuff, which gives us the exceptional. Where is it? Exceptional ship nano weave. Perfect. Now we can go upgrade the ship with a 
better hull modification. In fact, the highest quality one you can get. These guys stock loads of exceptional ship nano weaves, amazingly enough, so if you want to get those earlier on in the game, you could totally come here and upgrade your ship with the best possible hull upgrades earlier on in the game, assuming you can afford the, the upgrade costs. This feels really weird. We're doing nine kilometers a second in a ship that just masses so much. Holy... This is not natural. This feels wholly unnatural. Uh... I hope no one's coming through on the other side. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, there's no way we're making that turn. Brakes! Hit the brakes! Oh, man. Yeah, this thing, a uh, little bit slow to turn. Little bit slow. Yeah, I'll get back to you in a minute. Oh, on our way to this next location, I've noticed there's a few patrolling... Uh, Odysseus's E. I'm pretty sure they were produced in our shipyards. These guys have been going around kicking butt. Uh, yeah, they really do like Junk their... Gate. Holy Odysseus. Their, their Odysseus's. In fact, I think I do too. We might build a few of those to help supplement our, uh, expansionist designs that we have for future. Jump gate. Holy... Hey, buddy. We're about to slot in there. If I was you, I would move. I don't think this is going to go well for you. Um... Hmm... Yeah, yeah, don't worry. We're, we're just going to slide right in. <laughs> Oops. Hey, look, we warned you, right? We totally warned you. Uh, okay. See, he moves now. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. Uh, let's get, get let's get use this uh, exceptional nano weave to get ourselves some upgrades. Popping down to the uh, the workbench, which is thankfully not occupied this time around, we can, instead of using the polisher, the polisher gives you a ship drag bonus, but there's also another one down here, where is it? The honeycomb. This one gives you a ship mass bonus. It, it reduces your ship mass, which gives you a bunch of bonuses to travel to uh, your movement speed and agility and stuff. However, if we head over here, there is... Nanotubes. Nanotubes gives you the bonuses of both of those mods, simultaneously. So, for example, if we install this, we get a bonus to our ship mass and our ship drag, which is kind of nice. Um, why are you open? No, go away. Numbers are available on this. Wow, actually, both of these go up to, can go up to a potential of 23%. Ooh. Just looking at these numbers down here, could we potentially get 22 or whatever like that? How much does this cost? 250 grand a pop? No, no, you know what? That's good. We may have two billion, but I'm not gonna, like... Like, we could spin this at God knows how many times more. I'm not sure just how much, how lucky that is. I think that's a pretty good hit, though. That should make us a little bit more maneuverable. Now all we gotta do is go find ourselves uh, an exceptional engine modification, which is called Exceptional Engine Fuel Injector. We're also going to need several exceptional shield coil generators. And we already have an exceptional weapon chamber, but we're going to hold out and we're going to get it a legit way. Well, no, this one we just picked up randomly from one of our ships because we let it run overnight. And when we went around to collect everyone's stuff, someone had one on them. I don't know how they got it and I would like to know how, but unfortunately that information is somewhere in my sleep. All right, so our ship is now more maneuverable, which is good because it steers like a brick. Um, a brick crammed up a cow. We are going to go take our ship now. Ah. Battleship Zilla is not... Uh... What, what just happened? I think we just fell through the ship. Right. It's uh, fun and all, but let's just get back on board. We good? We good? Yeah, sometimes the game just likes to remind you, hey, this game has huge potential, but it's still janky as all hell at times because it's made by a tiny dev team. Gotta give them an A, though, for the amount of effort to put in. All right, let's undock. We're going to head over to Turin's base and go pick a fight with some Xenon, but at the Turin's behest. And the Turin's are going to pay us in mods. Well, that's what I've heard. But we're going to go over there, see if we can't pick a fight with them, or get, do, give them a hand, and they will give us some stuff in return. So the mission I've been advised to try it is the Turin versus Xenon. We have to talk to Sharon Singe, whoever is that, of the Turin Protectorate. Now, you can do ones where it's Split versus Argon, Holy Order versus Paranid, all this stuff, or actually, maybe even the Argon versus the Xenon. The problem with doing the ones where it's Holy Order versus Argon or Paranid or some stuff like that, you can sort of wipe out certain factions or, you know, soft block yourself from other missions. I would prefer to not, so killing some Xenon, well, 
cares about toasters, am I right? So, let's go ahead over there and uh, have a word with them. Arriving at the station, it's brought us to the Xenon War Room. That's, um... Interesting, I wasn't aware there was a Xenon War Room. Oh, great. NPCs. Alright, you uncanny valley weirdo. Let's hear what you have to say. Always good to see a new recruit. I am in charge of coordinating the Terran Protectorate's response to the Xenon to the threat. Terran? My to summarize, my boring drone... Basically, this is like signing up with some of the trade guilds. You just get new missions that show up now that you have talked to me. So, so long. You no longer need to deal with this representative of the Tehran Protectorate. How are you all so creepy? Wait, that was it? Captain? So, so all I have to do now is just, like, look up the missions and I can find something to do with Xenon and then go murder a bunch of them for you? Uh, right. Paint mod... Travel mod, enhanced quality. Ooh, exceptional quality. What's a pervase? Hmm. Yeah, I need to do some figuring out here and basically figure out the ones we want to do that will give us the most. That one looks hard, but I don't think it gives us anything we don't already have. But hey, you know what? Let's accept it. What do we have to do? Um, Looking at this quest, mission, whatever, we have to bring three Corvettes to this location. All equipment slots have to be filled. Expenses will be covered generously. It just says delivered three combat ships. Corvettes. Um, righto. Uh, do they have to be human Corvettes or can we just bring any? I'm going to bring you three Corvettes. Uh, we'll see how it works out. Uh, did I mention we own a factory? So, assuming they don't want turn stuff, we, we can just build them ourselves. Yeah, so we're just going to build them four Dragon Raiders. Wait, do they want three or four? Damn, I think they wanted three. Eh, whatever. We've got a spare Dragon Raider. It's not like it really cost us anything, and we can just sell the Dragon Raider to someone else. Okay, then. This should be a fairly handy quest. Well, we got all three of the Dragon Raiders to the location, and now we just have to... wait for someone to show up? There it is. Uh, wait, Sarah, Sharon Singh. Well... Sharon, hurry up. We're not even in sector. We're just using time fast forward so that we don't have to wait around for this to take so long. Come on. Where are you? Well, we just gave Sharon her three ships. Uh, have fun piloting some, well, dragon raiders. Uh, good luck with that. Also, you are in, like, Zart's Dominion, which is sort of the Zyarth Patriarchy's territory. I'm not sure if you're friendly with them. Uh, not my problem. Definitely not my problem. And where's my quest rewards? After checking through newly acquired ships, we found ourselves this thing, the Hoka Hokkaido Mineral Ship. Uh, and it also seems to contain a whole bunch of Navidium, which we'll probably sell on, which is grand. What's this factory do? You know what? Doesn't matter. What does matter is if we go in here and we go under loadout, we can check to see what weapons it's got, but also what modifications. So you'll notice here it's got a chassis shield generator mod that increases its shield capacity. This is an exceptional quality mod. We're gonna go rip that out. Actually, first we're probably gonna trade away this Nvidium to someone who wants it. Then we're gonna rip that mod out and then probably scrap the ship. My next plan was to go get more missions from the Terrans. Uh, unfortunately, the Earl King stopped working, as in it wouldn't follow orders when I wasn't on board. It took me a while to figure out what was going on and it's just uh, one of the joyous things of X4. So it turns out, uh, Battleship Zilla here, it, uh, it has a drone on it. Well, I've got, tried to get rid of it. It had a... not a repair drone. No, oh, cargo drone. It had a cargo drone on it. And it dispatched that cargo drone at some point to do something. But then I took over the ship and flew it somewhere. So now it's stuck in this loop of waiting for the cargo drone to come back before it can, you know, move on and do anything else. It won't fly anywhere. It won't do anything. It'll just sit there waiting for that drone to come back. That drone was several sectors away. Um, it could only move at about 50 meters per second. And until we find it and either kill it or do anything with it, our ship will just not, will always have that recall subordinates. So you can't delete it. We'll just come back. Entering you can't move system. it up or down. You can't do anything. Market. It will just sit there waiting on a ship, personally pilot the ship. This is the weirdest and dumbest bug I've ever seen. I even flew to an equipment dock and sold a drone that we didn't have on board. And then I filled this up with non cargo drones and it would still wouldn't yeah, go away. So eventually I filtered by drone. And I managed to actually hunt down the drone to this sector here. Here it is, moving slowly towards us at the speed of about 
58 meters per second. It would take an eternity if we hadn't located it. It was really hard. But I eventually found it. We're going to fly over there. We're going to blow it into tiny little pieces. And then we're going to head back to Terran space. Ah, good times, good times. On our way to pick up the drone, we got happily distracted by finding ourselves a bunch of bugs. And I thought, well, let's go check out how our bug killer does. Because this thing should, in theory, slaughter. Absolutely just butcher the absolute bejesus out of this thing. We should have just enormous amounts of damage, way more than we had with our Odysseus Vanguard. Um, guys, what are you doing? Station. No, I think we passed something. Never mind. Let's get it nice and close and turn this thing into absolute Swiss cheese. And that is plenty close enough. Anyone want to start firing the turrets? Anyone? Anyone? There we go. I'm not sure if there's anything shooting back yet. And what's the whole lot? 96%, only 5. It's definitely going down faster, but I think we can do more damage. And why aren't our medium turrets firing at everything? Ow, there we go. There's some turrets over there I'd like to kill. I see you over there, little blue thingy. Yeah, no, 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 no. There we go. Oh. Well, that just blew up a little bit too fast. Well, not that it's too fast, it's just I wasn't expecting it to go that quick. Fine, we'll get the other section over here somehow. Oh, uh, yes, and we also have to deal with all of the ships flying about the place. It's grand, it's grand. I'm pretty sure this ship can take pretty much anything they throw at us with ease. So, it turns out it's a little bit tricky to sort of... Well, to keep targeting what you want to target. Namely, the problem is, well, you've got to select a target and tell all your turrets to attack your selected target. They won't seem to attack the station on their own. That's a little bit odd, but eh, doesn't matter. We've managed to uh, get a fair few of them active blowing stuff up, which kind of works. Let's tilt the ship a bit more and see if we can't get a few more turrets involved in this. Anyone else want to start shooting? All right, do you remember that ship the Terrans gave us, the cargo one within the video minute? Ooh, it's actually a very pretty ship. This is just a miner. That is a beautiful miner. Wow. What's the paint job on this thing? Snake bite. Okay. I should really get into some of the paint skins. They are... That is beautiful. The default one just looks so terrible when you've seen it look like this. Also, these things have two docks can hold 40 ships. I should really be looking into the large miners more. You could turn them into little mini carriers. I mean, they can hold 40 fighters in them and they cost like a few million of... Oh, never mind. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. What we're here for is the shield modification. This thing comes with a Pavés, Pavés shield modification, which is a level 3 mod for its shields. Which, yes, we will dismantle and keep it. Currently, we have three exceptional shield coal generators because of some of the stuff we did. Well, some of the stuff our people did last night. I don't know exactly what. But if we dismantle this one in here, that should go up to four. And boom. So now we have four of them, meaning we can install four of these shield mods on our big ship. And this is how you sort of go around getting the exceptional mods. You want to do quests. But the basic quests you get from going around, say, oh, let's just check in here. Like these other offer missions and guild missions, they don't seem to offer anything very good. Oh, there's an advanced shield coil generator, which is, yeah. We don't want advanced. What we want is exceptional. And to get all the exceptional stuff, it seems you've got to do some of the missions for these factions. It's the only way. Now, I've accepted to kill Xenon for both the Argon and the Terrans. And the plan is going to be to jump into Argon and Terran space occasionally and just, you know, see what kind of missions they're offering that might be worthwhile for us and could result in us getting some exceptional mods. We managed to pick up a mission from the Terrans that will give us another shield module. Actually, no, this is the Argons. And the Argons got us to buy them some ships, which they paid us for, but we didn't really care. What we really care about is the full payout at the end where we get another one of those Pavés mods, and wow, that's a lot of spinning on the right. Never mind, we're not gonna, we're just gonna ignore that. Uh, they asked us to claim a spot, a spot of land, and then we have to build a defensive station on it. So, this is the defensive station they wanted. Um, basically, two dock areas, check, two piers, uh... That counts, and uh, 20 turrets, 
36 missile turrets and 20 shield generators, which should go on the uh, the defense platforms there. I don't know if six defense platforms, which is what they requested, will have 36... Oh, missile turrets. Damn it. I have to put on 36 missile turrets. Buggery, one second. A quick change in plan. Now, Request permission to dock. the thing is... You have to actually build it exactly as requested. So you get six defense modules, two dock areas, two piers, 20 turrets, 36 missile turrets, and 20 shield generators. So we should be covered. We've got a whole bunch of plasma turrets on there. In fact, this thing is going to be the most anti-capital thing ever built. There is nothing but plasma and dumb fire heavy torpedo turrets on there. That thing's just designed for killing large ships. Fighters, it will struggle horrifically with. It won't have a chance. But everything else, murderage. It also appears like all of our traders showed up to, uh, to actually trade with it. That's um, that's good to know. Oh, and it's even has it actually started building? Way. It has actually started building already. Normally, it's much slower to get started, but I suppose it's close enough to our home base, is it? Um, yeah, we're right here. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, four jumps away. Perfect. Oh, this makes things so much simpler. Even in SATA mode, this is gonna take ages to build. See, up until this point, we've been trying to get a really good ship to do a bunch of killing with. And that's like, you know, we're, we're, we're playing a, a chess style thing where we've got a very high value ship that does a lot of damage and is really handy at killing everything. However, that is way, way, way too much effort right now because of all the time it's taking to get all these exceptional mods. I think we've got just about a, and good enough for everything. So what I want to do instead is, well, you see, there's this faction over here. What are they called? They're called the Free Families. And the Free Families are, well, I have nothing personally against them. But however, they do have these two sectors over here. This one has 567 million methane in there. And their adjacent territory has 12,000 methane. In fact, this whole place is the most methane-rich place in the entire map. It's just incredible. And methane is one of those things you can never quite get enough of. We go back to our... Uh, Home section over here, everything everywhere all at once. You'll see methane is one of those things we just can't quite keep topped up all the time. We're doing fine, but we could be doing better. So I say we wipe out this entire sector, build a base, say, in about Tarka's Ravine, and then we can strip mine. Well, can't really strip mine the stuff out, but we'll be able to get a, an absolutely infinite amount of helium, hydrogen, ice, and methane from these sectors. Uh, we'll get a decent amount of ore and silicon from here. In fact, there's quite a good bit of ore and silicon right there. But there's even more available down here. So I say we take this entire sector here and annihilate it and take it over. And wipe out the free families while we're at it. Uh, however, we're going to need some ships for that. So I figure the fastest way to do this is just build a bunch of these things. What are they called? Ah, uh, the Odysseus E Destroyers. Now, this is very similar to our Odysseus E Vanguard. And all we're going to do is for the large turret mounts... Oh no, yeah, it will stick on those things, but for the turrets, when it comes to the large ones, large Parnid plasma turrets. Longest range, best damage, a little bit slow on the turning, but we don't care because all you're going to be shooting at them with is capital ships and stations. Done and dusted. A couple of uh, Mark II shields or some Mark II shields to sort that out. Same thing for the next one, Parnid plasma, Parnid plasma, and then for all the mediums, we're just going to go with Argon flak. Argon flak all the way along and some Parnid shields. I'm not bothered with the turn shields. We would have to do a whole other production run and stuff like that. Uh, for the main shields on this thing, we're just going to go with Paranid as well. Nothing too fancy. All-round thrusters. Split all-round engines for the maximum speed we're looking for there. And finished. So basically, this is covered in flak and plasma. And that's it. And it's a reasonably fast, decently good all-round ship. Uh, we're just going to call that the Odysseus Swarm. We're going to add that to our shopping list. And then we're just going to build like a hundred of them. Uh, yeah, whatever. We're going to be short a few parts, but that's okay. We can build some more. That's... F oh my god, we're going to need 292,000 whole parts. That's going to take like three hours. But that's okay. And then we're going to take them and uh, we're going to swarm these guys. We're just going to throw wave after wave after wave of Odysseus Vanguards at them and see what happens. Because, I mean, why not? Uh, I was going to build like only about 40, but then I thought, why? We have loads and loads of this stuff in here. In fact, let's just check the large fabrication bay. Odysseus, 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 Odysseus. Yep, yep, four large fabrication bays. We'll get them done in a reasonable time frame. Anyway, 
I am going to try and figure out if I can't locate some way to get our hands on the final mod we are missing. You see, you see, we already have the chassis modification maxed out. Uh, weapon modifications, we've actually got one. Don't know how, don't care, but we're going to install that. Uh, shield modifications, we've got four. So our main shield we can boost massively and maybe a few of the, the ones protecting our subguns. It's the engine modification I need to get my hands on. If we can get our hands on an exceptional engine fuel injector, then, well... We're sorted. We can take our, uh, what's it called now? Yes, we can take the Cosmic Cuddler and upgrade every single last bit of it to maximum. Then we can take its uh, little fleet of Odysseus Vanguard destroyers with it and go over here and start doing some absolute carnage. I figure we can just, well, with that many ships, we should just be able to just raffle stomp them, right? I mean, we'll lose a few dozen, but yeah, that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Anyway, I am going to cut this out here. I've got a bunch of hunting to do in the background. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Good luck.